Well, I haven't been able to fly too much in the past few weeks due to some maintenance issues. I had the guys work on a small pressure leak that we had uh, for the cabin. The radar needed to be completely replaced, which was done under warranty, thankfully. I was getting a crew alert system message about the pilot's door being open, which was just a sensor issue we had to swap out. And I was missing a static wick that apparently uh, was broken off by somebody on the ground. And so that was replaced and the repainting was done to make it look correct afterward. But in this quick video, I thought I'd get back into it by talking about the oxygen mask and how that works in the plane. The new toe pins that I recently bought. A new mount I got for the 10 and a half inch iPad so it'll fit on the yoke. And a new way of mounting the Stratus ADS-B weather receiver in the plane. So here's the pilot's oxygen mask. It's actually on the right side so you reach out over the passenger. And to bring it down, you simply squeeze those red tabs that releases the clips and lets it come out from the ceiling and the hose just feeds out from that upper cavity there. Clamps down pretty forcefully. These on. That sound is just me breathing. And if you go to emergency mode, it'll continually flow oxygen out, which I'm not going to do it because it's too forceful with this little red piece here. Woo! So by turning this dial that's labeled emergency over to this other position, it'll do a continuous flow. And if you open this up on the nose piece, this little vent will allow that some of that air to go into your goggles to keep blowing fresh air out and uh, theoretically keep out the smoke and keep them from fogging and so forth. But the way you make this webbing expand is you just squeeze these red tabs. That lets some air in there. And when you let it go, it... Uh, bungees back down on your face very very strong to keep it in place all right now i'm going to try to see if i can figure out how to get it back in there again basically bunch all this up there we go and we can just feed this hose back into the side wall here with its little regulator, it's in line. There we go. And so we're looking at the nose wheel here, and uh, in order to tow it on the ground, you've got to put some metal tow pins into these two holes, as you'll see in just a moment. And one of the dangers here is if you leave those there and the gear retracts, there's a possibility that the gear will not extend later when it's time to land, which would obviously be really bad. So it's super important as part of your pre-flight to make sure that those are pulled out. So I got a new set that's going to be much harder to forget. Um, first of all, these two pins are connected to each other. The old ones were just two loose pins. And I also was able to use a red dog leash to hook it up to some of the other pre-flight items that get removed so that there's no shot of me leaving those on the nose wheel. And jumping back in the plane here, I went out this morning and was testing out a brand new iPad mount for the yoke. Before I had an iPad mini here, I've been wanting to move to the 10 and a half inch iPad. And the uh, QR mounts folks just released it. And I got it in yesterday and put it in here and it seems to be doing pretty well. I'd say this is barely, barely fits, but it does seem to work. I moved the yoke all around and wasn't getting any interference. so. So far, so good. I've yet to fly with it, but I hope to try that out any day now. And this is the new Stratus mount I was talking about. It's called the Quad Lock. And I had to kind of rig it up on a RAM mount, but effectively it's this circle with these uh, four ears coming off. And you could pretty easily, with one hand, bring your device up to it at a 45 degree angle, clip it in, turn it, and you're done. 
so it's better than the old style clip I was using here before. And here's the part that goes on the Stratus itself. This just put on there with double-sided tape. And lastly, I finally got my RVSM approval from the FAA. This has been something I've worked on since buying the airplane in February, so it's greater than six months of, of effort. But essentially I had to send this book in to the local FISDO at San Antonio and they had to approve it. I have to sign a few papers, return that, and then I have to do a monitoring flight, which for me is going to be over the Wichita VOR area. RVSM stands for Reduced Vertical Separation Minimum, and it's required to have that certification if you want to fly between 29,000 feet and 41,000 feet. The TBM can go up to 31,000, and so, so far I've been limited to 28. Now with this, I'll have that extra 3,000 feet available to me, which can help me save fuel on longer trips. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.